let's talk about the polymerization mechanism that creates polystyrene. You need some styrene monomers to start because you make polystyrene out of many styrene monomers. We have a double bond here on this alkyl group, and we have what look like double bonds on this benzene. But there's resonance here. These double bonds are more stable than this one. This is the one that's going to get attacked by our free radical. A double bonded monomer or a monomer with double bonds in it is probably going to undergo addition polymerization. And for that, you're going to need some kind of free radical. Now, when I was reading about this, apparently we use benzoyl peroxide in the real world, but your teacher might use Br or Cl, basically anything that has an unpaired electron. The first step of this polymerization is actually breaking a molecule apart to create these free radicals. That's called initiation. Now, that free radical is going, that unpaired electron wants to be paired with something. And the pi bond, the second of the two bonds in between these two atoms, is just weak enough that it will break apart to help that free radical pair. Now, what I'm going to show here is that unpaired electron moving towards, you know, a, a made up bond that's going to exist between this carbon and that particle. And I'm going to show one electron from the bond going there as well. Please note I'm using single headed arrows where uh, where the arrow only exists to one side of the line that it's connected to because I'm showing a single electron moving. We're getting one electron from the bond, one from the free radical. We're going to create a single bond there. The unpaired electron that's left over inside that bond is going to move here to that carbon. Now, what we've ended up with then is we still have our benzene. It was unaffected by the reaction, and we're still connected to that carbon, although it does have a free radical on it. We're still singly connected to this carbon here, but that carbon is now connected to whatever our initiator was. Now, this doesn't look like a polymer yet because we have to include many monomers to create the polymer. What I want to point out is that this free radical is also strong enough to help break apart the double bond of the next molecule. So this molecule, which now is the X with a styrene attached to it, is going to play the exact same role that this free radical initiator did. Single headed arrow, break the double bond or the pi bond between those two carbons and send the other electron to the carbon in between. What you now have is the X connected to all the stuff it was connected to before. But now that carbon is connected to another carbon, and that's the start of another styrene molecule. You can probably see where we're going with this. And now we have a free radical here. We can add on another styrene and another styrene over and over and over until we run out of monomer. Now, in the real world, the, the chains end up being like a thousand long or something like that. You don't have to show all thousand, obviously. But if you repeat and repeat and repeat, you'll end up with that X. And again, that X really doesn't matter what it was in the beginning. What matters is that you have a thousand styrenes all connected to each other. I'm going to draw this benzene for you along with the bond to the next styrene, etc., etc. I'm going to put a... Um, I just want to make sure that I'm cutting this off in the right place. So that has a phenyl group at the beginning. Then it's going to be connected to another carbon, to another carbon, and over and over and over again. This here is the repeating unit. This could get copied and pasted to here and to here and to here. And you'd end up with, I don't know, how many of those? We usually put an N to show that there's N many of those in the chain. Now, just to emphasize what's happening here, I'm gonna pencil in what I mean by this is the repeating unit. Then I go across and down and it's another styrene. Then I go across and down and it's another styrene, and I'm going to repeat that n times. But if you think I'm going to write that out a thousand times, I'm not. I'll get, 
a computer to do that if I need it, but I don't, so here you are. The point is that that's my repeating unit, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, a thousand times. What happens at the very end when you have this free radical? Well, in the beginning of this reaction, there was probably another free radical that was made. So there's like two or obviously more chains being built in your solution at the same time. If two of these end up connecting, then you just end up with something that's like doubly as long, right? Or uh, maybe, maybe there's a side reaction and it broke apart and it terminated some other way. The, the connecting of two of the free radicals in the end to make something that isn't a free radical, aka the polymerization stops, is called termination. So the addition polymerization is the initiation to create this. The propagation where you add styrene, 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 styrene. And then to get rid of these two free radicals come together and that's called termination. Anyways, thank you for being with me. The real meat of this is the propagation after all. Thanks for being with me. And, uh, and I want to say that this video goes out to uh, my friend, Professor Timothy Ramadar from Howard University. Good to see you, Tim. And to the rest of you, best of luck.